Hi there, okay, this is Chris Stunning here from Tech Quarters. I'm here with the technical team today. Uh, we're at the Excel Center. And uh, we're here to see what Steve Barmer's got to say about the future of the cloud with Microsoft. It's a full day's affair, so uh, let's see what we learn today. See you later. Okay, so this is the main uh, thoroughfare and uh, we're just heading on down to where the Microsoft exhibition will be and the start of the day, 9.30. So. Okay, so this is the main thoroughfare where Microsoft uh, will be presenting or doing their exhibition right at the end. Uh, funnily enough, this is the uh, staging area for the London Triathlon, which I did a couple of years ago here. Uh, thousands of bikes and uh, triathletes knocking around. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, looks like we're not the only people to be interested in the Microsoft Cloud. Got here just in the nick of time. So we're going to talk about yeah, so what is cloud, the innovation, productivity, uh, and cost cutting. Chris Moon is going to talk fantastic. I don't know if any of you have heard Chris Moon speak before. Absolutely brilliant guy talking about, about change and dealing with change. Of course, Mr. Bulmer just before lunch. After lunch, we're going to talk again a whole bunch of stories about how partners are using cloud. And then we have Windows Phone 7 uh, demo at the end. And uh, we hope to have you away by 5 o'clock top. Concerned are you about security? Well, security and you know is always going to be absolutely you know top priority for us. You know we're dealing with customer data, we're dealing with you know potentially data that's sensitive in other ways. Um, but when I look at the service that we get from the company who manage our data centres now, you know I think we get a really really good service from them, and their security is absolutely up to the mark. It's what we need, and all of our most sensitive data is stored on their premises. And yet, when I look at the security certifications on the Microsoft data centers, our existing ones don't have half of those. So, uh, the, the, there is, this, there is a, a misconception that when you put something in the cloud, you're somehow making it more vulnerable and more public. And that really isn't the case. I think it's, it's, it is that perception, though, yeah, isn't it? It's still, it still is, is there in, in kind of public's mind. But it's yeah. interesting that you have that, um, that real world experience. Well, Thank you, have you. To, you have to fight that battle. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you. Order on quarter is absolutely SMB. If you look at last quarter, for example, the average seat size that we were selling was around about 20, and that's absolutely in the heartland of SMB business, as you know. But let me give you some context. You know, all the analysts use different numbers, but there's somewhere in the region of 3.9 4 million small businesses in the UK. That's four million businesses. That's just the massive opportunity for Microsoft and our partners to address today with technology that's, uh, that's ready, uh, readily available. Now look, you're looking very excited, uh, and, and you should be as well, but you know, that's not the best bit. The really cool and sexy piece of this, it's all about accessibility, and it's all about, and it's, it's all about uh, affordability. So you know, the interesting thing is, the majority of those SMB businesses, those 3.9 million SMB businesses, outside of email, they're not really using the technology that's available to them. And so therefore, as we get into conversations with these organizations about moving to the cloud and start talking about productivity gains, cost savings and efficiency, what we find is we manage to sell up the stack. And on an average, we're deploying with our partners four workloads into those SMB customers. So in addition to email, it's web conferencing, it's uh, team collaboration, uh, and it's also CRM online. And the beauty of that Piece is the fact that what it does is it gives us the opportunity to wrap services, whether it's deployment, migration, or traditional services around that in a wrapper uh, with a, an elongated annuity stream. So it's just a fantastic opportunity for everyone. What have we learned? We've been in there about two hours now. Uh, so far, talk about BPOS, uh, so we know all about that already. Uh, what they did talk about, particularly EasyJet, was this thing called Azure App Fabric, which 
really is about hybrid computing where they link existing on-premise applications and migrate parts of it to the cloud as opposed to the full transition of the whole application. Uh, so giving you a bit better uh, return on your investment uh, if you've already forked out for the whole internal systems. Uh, so Azure App Fabric uh, will be one to look out for. to spend some time with you today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the opportunities uh, that we see in front of us collectively and uh, hopefully give you a little bit of uh, kind of a sense of where we think that there will be uh, money to be made for us collectively and uh, opportunities to build, uh, again, long-lasting, healthy, successful businesses. Uh, this is an interesting first for me. Uh, I discovered on my way out here today that I'd never really been east of the Tower of London. <laughs> Not only have I now been east of the Tower of London, I've discovered there's really quite an amazing conference facility, and I think I get a chance to see more partners today than I ever have in my, my life, uh, at least as coming to the UK. And so I really appreciate your taking the time uh, and spending it here with us. I gave a speech to about 100 CEOs uh, at our headquarters in Seattle in May, about 30 minutes, and I thought I'd nailed it. I'd really done a good job of describing the cloud. And after my speech, it was kind of quiet. One lady puts up, who I know reasonably well, puts up her hands and said, Steve, that was, that was great, but I'm not, still not sure. What is the cloud? I think we all use the cloud really to describe the transformation in the way the IT industry works. And it's not any one thing. And that's why it's complex to discuss with people who are outside the industry. And yet for everybody here in the room, I think we all know it when we see it. The cloud relates to this phenomenon of merging somehow the best of the internet and the best of corporate data centers. The cloud refers to using intelligence in devices in ways that complement the intelligence that's in the back end. The move to the cloud is, refers to an environment in which we can assume all of the world's information and all the world's people are part of the computing infrastructure that our applications can talk to. And the cloud refers to essentially building data centers and building applications in new ways that are consistent and appropriate for the kind of rapid change, scalability, instant deployment, manageability that we must have to build real-time, high-scale services out in the cloud. The cloud wants smarter devices. I think for a long time there was a theory that said in the world of the cloud you just have dumb screens talking to very intelligent back ends. Whether those back ends are run by our mutual customers, whether they're run by us, whether they're run by you, whether they're run by you in collaboration with a hoster, but very thin devices talking to very smart back ends. I don't think most of us still entertain that as a serious notion. What we should entertain, I think what most of us now do entertain, is the notion that we need smart devices that are optimized for the cloud. When we look at, and I'll just pick on Internet Explorer 9 since we launched it a, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago. With Internet Explorer 9 we're saying yes, yes, yes. HTML5, Internet standards are important. But we're also saying we can take HTML5 and make it faster and better by integrating the way we render it with the rest of the Windows infrastructure. 
We can eliminate the differences between applications by treating websites and applications coherently from the user perspective. That's what I would say is designing a next generation smart client infrastructure designed for the cloud. The first time, uh, so Adam, Netbook, very light. This thing with the combination of the Windows software is being designed to be a smart client with the internet in mind. You want to read, you just flip the screen around, close it up, you read, you write, you take notes. And we see a lot of great innovation in PCs and phones and a variety of other devices uh, that should allow us to move forward very, very seamlessly. So, because there will be customers, partners, government, for whom the public cloud isn't right, but people are still going to want to get the advantages of next generation hardware and software architecture and next generation development tools that facilitates the writing of these kinds of, of applications. I get asked by my press, by a lot of people, how do you think you stack up versus competition in terms of business cloud services? And I'll tell you, I feel great about where we are. Fantastic. And I think you should too. On the desktop or, or knowledge worker side, I really think there's an incredible gap in adoption and capability and references uh, between us and Google, who's really the only other player really competing. On the platform side, Amazon's done a nice job. If all you want to do is take a virtual machine and put it in the cloud, but if you really want to build a next generation application, they haven't tried, tried to do that. And guys like VMware and Oracle and others also have done a good job at some things. But there's no public cloud service that they're really doing that either gives the agility nor serves to validate the things that they're doing in their private cloud. So I feel like we've got a real leadership position and one that is partners. Uh, I invite you to bet with us on because I think it'll be of incredible uh, mutual importance. Sometimes the mess that they are in already, lack of um, investment, especially in recent times with the economic situation, um, it is very hard with those things to move to a new set of technologies. The great thing about cloud is one, it takes all of that away, you move to an annuity stream and then you build. The second thing is you remain agile because you guys are doing the work in the cloud for us uh, and they will move through the new version. version. So it actually aids deployment, it aids um, the use of technology. So clearly you'd anticipate repeat business, not just as people continue to subscribe, but new work, new projects, new opportunities for, for you guys. Yeah, the, the investment just moves. You know, a, a great example is in, in that project I talked about, um, some of the money that they would have saved that they were had in mark for the deployment. We ended up doing a bunch of SharePoint workflows to fully utilize that platform. Now they were on it. They haven't even envisaged SharePoint in the original plan because cost to get there was too high for that particular organization from where they were on that roadmap. Okay, so we just had the uh, roundup from Steve Barmer, who's the CEO of Microsoft. And uh, I suppose the short summary is he was enth incredibly enthusiastic about Microsoft's offering for the cloud uh, and how it rivals all the competition. Um, he was making a big play about his Windows mobile phone uh, over the uh, Nokia's, the Apple's and the Blackberry and um, we're waiting on the next session for the technical roundup. So um, all in all, quite interesting, but uh, we'll see what they've got to offer this afternoon. Okay, here we are, we're at the end of the day, uh, we've been to see Microsoft's transition to the cloud at the Excel Center. Uh, we've listened to Steve Barmer and a lot of the associates. The last person that we saw was the Microsoft licensing team. A little bit of confusion here, but one question we posed to them was, are the Office web applications going to be live within BPOS in the next few months? And the answer is most likely. So watch this space. We expect the Office web apps to be live within BPOS within the next few months, possibly the start of the new year. Uh, and that's it all around. A great day, uh, very enlightening, and um, I think we'll sign off now.